Hi, I'm Kevin Hildebrand. I'm Cantor at Concordia Theological Seminary. And in my last podcast, I talked to you about some ideas for Lent and Holy Week. So that means this podcast is devoted to some ideas for Easter. Of course, during the season of Lent, we take a hiatus from saying and singing alleluias within the church service. So in the season of Easter, it might be a good time to take stock of how are we saying and singing the alleluia in verse prior to the gospel reading. Now, uh, there's many, many ways of uh, singing an alleluia uh, prior to the reading of, of the Holy Gospel, and uh, perhaps future podcasts can unpack some of the great variety and richness that the church has. Today, I want to focus on a, a small uh, number of ideas, things that are already in the book, things that are readily accessible, and most importantly, they're free. So uh, let's talk about this Alleluia and verse. It's provided in our divine service settings. Uh, for instance, in setting one, there is a general Alleluia and verse provided for the congregation to sing. That's that one by Richard Hillard. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? And so forth. But you may have noticed, for instance, in settings three and four, uh, there's even rubrics that say something like, the choir may sing, uh, may sing the appointed verse. Well, what's the appointed verse? This is another proper for the day, just like there's an appointed Old Testament epistle, gospel reading, an appointed collect. And it's typically a key verse from the upcoming gospel reading to help prepare the congregation for the hearing of the gospel that uh, will be, be happening uh, following the, the singing of this Alleluia and verse. Uh, we talk about this in our liturgics class, and usually our students will ask, well, how do you know what the appointed verse is? It's not listed in the lectionary, for instance. Well, you can find that, of course, in the, um, in the book that lists the proverbs of the day. You can find that on Lutheran Service Builder, and it's also provided on this example we show here. This is from the back of the organist's accompaniment book, and I especially like to point that out to pastors who might not readily use that book like uh, uh, those of us who are up uh, at, at the organ or at the, the piano would do. This is found on page 186 and following in the back of this organist book. And you can see here that all the appointed verses of the day for the entire church year are given. They are pointed uh, for ease of singing with a psalm tone. There's those uh, tones are even given on the top of each page. And these pages in the back of this book are also completely uh, uh, reprintable for however many singers that you may need to, to sing these, these uh, uh, verses of the day. Now, Let's show how this might work. If, uh, if we're going to use the appointed verse of the day on Easter Sunday, uh, we could refer back to that, that page, and, and you can see that that text is, Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to life to light through the gospel. Now, let's pretend we're singing um, this uh, uh, in a divine service setting three. And uh, in the organist book, we even have this, uh, this list with rubrics here and, uh, and clear instructions of how to do this. And this is how it goes. The congregation will sing the Alleluia first. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And then there's the rubric. The appointed verse is sung by a cantor or choir according to the following tone. Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And then the congregation sings the Alleluias again. Alleluia, and so forth. Let me show you how this would work also if we were using that other Alleluia in divine service setting through the C major Alleluia. It, it's, it's the same pattern, but this different music. First, the congregation sings the Alleluias, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And then that proper appointed verse is sung. Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And then the congregation sing the Alleluia again. Now, this same 
Uh, chant tone uh, right here uh, is also used when we uh, sing the Alleluia's from setting four. For instance, it's the same key of, of C, C major. So let's look and see how that looks for uh, for uh, setting four. We have this Alleluia that's that's right in in the book, and the congregation would sing the Alleluia's. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Then the appointed verse is sung by the, the soloist or by the choir. Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And then the congregation sings the Alleluia again. Right. Now, it might be helpful to print this out with an example right in, in the worship bulletin. Uh, for instance, if you put the, the music for uh, the Alleluia Right in, in the bulletin, you can pull that out of Lutheran Service Builder. Here it is from uh, setting three, the C major. And there's just a simple instruction. The congregation sings the Alleluia's before and after the verse. We already know how this goes, but we have that right there. And then there's the proper verse text that the, the, the choir or, or vocal group is, is singing. And, uh, and it, so that's right there uh, with a, a, minimum of, a minimum of instruction for, for the congregation to sing. Now, if uh, we're looking at this list of proper verses, you may notice that then throughout the rest of the Easter season, for Easter 2 through Easter 7, uh, there's actually an additional set of Alleluias. In, in, in the Easter season, it's, it's almost impossible to sing too many Alleluias. And so for uh, the appointed verse in the successive Sundays of Easter, you actually sing Alleluias before the appointed verse, in the middle of it, and at the end. Uh, so we might even print uh, that in the bulletin this way. And here's using the example from setting four. So there's the Alleluia's that we all sing. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And then the choir sings the first part of the verse. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. And then we all sing the Alleluia's again. Alleluia. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Alleluia. 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 And then the next text. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And finally, the Alleluia's. So you can see if it's on, on the page or you know, in front of the, the, the congregation that way, I think that's a pretty clear way of, of uh, presenting that. Again, if your congregation knows these Alleluia's already, you're not teaching them anything new. It's just presenting them in a, a different order. Now, a couple other ideas for pre presenting the Alleluia's using material that's right in the book. For instance, maybe on, a, on Easter Sunday or the, the, the following two Sundays or, or part of the Easter season, you may want to sing a hymn that's, that's full of, of Alleluia's. For instance, hymn 459, Christ is our risen from the grave's dark prison. That could serve as, as the Alleluia in preparation for, for the gospel. Or in the service of prayer and preaching, page 266, we have this new canticle uh, that uh, begins, Christ has been raised from the dead, Alleluia. And here at Concordia Theological Seminary, we've used that uh, New Testament canticle from page 266 in the divine service as an option, as a uh, sort of extended Alleluia and verse prior to the reading of the gospel. And that could be a further option for your, your congregation to use using material we already have right in, in front of us in the book. Those are some ideas for you and your Easter season, and we pray that your Easter season is a blessing to you and your parish.